The mouse is clicking around. Thank you. And thank you, Raquel. First up, just a quick recap of our FY24 budget calendar. These dates have not changed. You've seen these throughout our previous two budget workshops. Today is workshop number three and the presentation of the proposed budget. On June the 6th, which will be our regular council meeting day, we'll have our first public hearing on the proposed budget. And then June the 20th, we'll have the second public hearing and council is scheduled to vote on the budget adoption. Just as a quick reminder, Sandy Springs has always prided ourselves on practicing very conservative budgeting and financial management tools and processes. We very conservatively estimate our revenues and expenses every year because we don't want to have any unforeseen surprises at the end of the fiscal year that will result in us having to make major changes to our budget plan. We also do not utilize one-time revenue sources for ongoing expenses. That means that when we are proposing the use of fund balance reserves, they are always for one time or capital project purposes. A quick reminder of council's adopted priorities, which were established during the retreat earlier this January, but were adopted by council in February. All of the items that are in the recommended budget today tie back to our adopted priorities. At the core of everything that we do is customer service and citizen engagement followed by delivering the highest quality public safety services, enhancing our multimodal transportation accessibility and maintaining our high standards for community appearance, providing inclusive and diverse recreational and cultural enrichment opportunities, ensuring long-term water reliability for all residents and our business community, promoting sustainable growth and fostering environmental stewardship, and then creating and supporting targeted economic development opportunities with a focus on redevelopment throughout the city. This is a slide that you all saw in budget workshop number two. And if you would like to, in your packets before you, you have both the printouts of the slides today, and you also have the line item detail of the FY24 proposed budget. My suggestion to, to you would be that you roll them side by side, because as I begin presenting the slides, I will be referring to various pages in the budget book for your reference. The only change that has been made on this slide from what you had seen previously is a slight reduction in the recreation and park subcontractor agreements to $1,050,000, but that is a rather large increase over the FY23 numbers, which is being driven in large part by inflation, as well as by an increase in the cost of delivery parks maintenance services. It's also worth reminding uh, everyone in the room that the city is proposing a 6% cost of living adjustment for all city employees. Again, we believe very strongly in being the highest paid in the region so that we can continue to attract and retain the highest quality talent to serve our community. We are also proposing to fully absorb the cost of the health insurance increase this year, which is estimated at 11% over our FY23 rates. That way we are not giving employees a pay raise and then actually reducing their pay by having to increase their share of the employee premiums. And then we are also absorbing the cost of an estimated 12% increase in the city's general liability insurance. There's still an asterisk increase in jail services as we continue to be in discussions with the city of Smyrna, who provides the majority of our short-term jail beds. Yes, ma'am. On um, in budget um, workshop one on page eight, it says debt service for fire trucks 62,000. And then this, and then this one was one million two hundred. So also because that was just the increase. This is the full amount. That so we that's showing. the increase. Yeah. What we showed in the first one was simply the increase, and then we had a question in that workshop to show the total amount. So the amounts on today's slide are the full amounts that are included as operating assumptions, not just the increase over the prior year base budget. Well, coal is coal is an increase. It is. Well, some, not, of these, not the whole, some of these are increased. That is the, the full amount. Of the coal. Yes. Okay. Is, are, is, are these materials posted online? I know I'm posting them now. Oh, you're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So but, but you know, yes, sir. Th this is still a blended thing. I mean, like the funding for PFA, that's the amount of funding for the PFA. That's the amount of principal and interest. Right. The full amount of principal right. and interest. And the, like, and the COLA 
is the over and above increase, right? From the base budget. That's the full right. amount of a 6%. Right. So some increase. of these are base and some of these are increases. This is, I mean, right? We've tried to standardize them this time so that- Well, I mean, there's no increase like funding to PFA for principal and interest, probably pretty static. It is. Right. There's actually been a slight tick down. Okay, so I'm saying, but you're showing the whole amount there and then you're showing the cost. It's fine, as long as we understand that some of these are full amounts and some of these are increased amounts. That was the same on page eight too. That's why it was yeah. confusing. This is the question. No, the whole the amount for the city employees is just the increase. Right, but- so that's not the total. That's not all of any. That's right, of course, total. right. But that's the total. But that's the total of the. That's the total of the principal and interest on bonds. Right. But in workshop one on page eight, you have the total amount for COLA, but you only have the increase for the debt for the trucks. Right. And here we were trying to show the full that's amount. I mean, okay. Yeah. It's, I think it's, I get it. Okay. But the recreation and park subtractor contractor agreement, for example, that's an increase over it. No, that's the full amount. That's the full amount of this year. Correct. Okay. So and the same for part uh, for public work subcontractor agreements. So, so are these all full amounts, Eden? Or yes. They, so they're all full amounts. So they're the base okay. plus any increase. Yes. Okay. 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 Next slide we have is our FY24 capital budget assumptions for the fleet fund. This is also a slide that we previously looked at. We're proposing 1.5 million for replacement police fleet vehicles, which is estimated to allow us to purchase 27 vehicles. There'd be one new vehicle for community development, three vehicles for fire administration. We have a pay-as-you-go supplement in here for fire apparatus replacement that will lead to us purchasing two new fire apparatuses in 2026 a new parks and recreation vehicle replacement and continuing our electric vehicle initiative. Question about the electric vehicle initiative. Yes, ma'am. Uh, our previous uh, five-year CIP has it uh, as coming out of the, well, it has it labeled as general fund under the funding source. Um, has it always been fleet or has it changed to fleet? The fleet fund, it, it was changed to fleet last year. It was. That is when we created the fleet fund. Got it. So it would have been general. Yes, ma'am. Next slide that we'll talk through is the FY24 capital budget assumptions. At your seats today, you have a large printout of the five-year CIP. You'll see that the items that are listed here are the things that are proposed for funding in FY24. As we get further into the presentation, we'll talk through the new five-year CIP as things have changed from what we had in last year's budget. First up, you'll see parcel corrections, and we'll also talk through some of these when we get further into the enhancements for each of the departments. This, these series of slides also includes all of the ballot items, the six items that were recommended for funding. Those are all included in 24. Yes, sir. They are included in 24. Continuing through our capital budget assumptions, You'll see we have Petrie Dunwoody Road multimodal, multimodal study. This is a blended fund source with $50,000 coming from the general fund and the $200,000 through a grant from the Atlanta Regional Commission that council approved us applying for a couple of meetings back. High Point Road, the pedestrian crossing, this is the construction. Traffic calming, Roswell Road, MARTA Access Transit Streetscape. Roswell Road at Lake Placid intersection improvements, internally illuminated street signs, rehab program, city beautification program, Long Island Drive at Mount Vernon Highway intersection improvement. That was a valid item for this year. Morgan Falls pedestrian lighting, also a valid item. Continuing our TMC fiber program, guardrail replacement program, Lake Forest, Allen Road, intersection improvement, also a ballot item, and this is partial year funding. There will be subsequent funding in the same amount for FY25 to continue and complete that project. 
continuing our traffic management program, intersection and operational improvements, continued bridge and dam maintenance. The pavement management program line is a blending of six and a half million from the general fund for resurfacing, and then LMIG from GDOT, the local maintenance improvement grant of 900,000 for a total of 7.4 million. Stormwater maintenance and repair, and then stormwater capital improvements. Also continuing our capital assumptions, the flood, mitigate, flood mitigation and resilience plan, a ballot item, Morgan Falls Dog Park Improvements Design Work, Abernathy Greenway Enhancements, a ballot item, Morgan Falls Athletic Complex Improvements, also a ballot item, Crooked Creek Park Trail Improvements from Impact Fees, and Citywide Design Guideline Development, and the final item for the video board outside of Studio Theater. Question, please. Yes, sir. So when I look at the 11 by or 11 by 17 sheet, your capital improvement plan totals 34, 339. And I look at this totals 35, 880. So we got 1.5 million somewhere. That's a difference. Any idea what that is? Yes, sir. Because that does not include all of these funds that are coming up. This is showing all capital items. These are showing the remaining breakdown. So we have CDBG. PCID funds, and then we show tree fund as well. Right. So, I'm, so if I get to the forty-six million in the earlier slide, flip to page four of the eleven by seventeen. The tabloid seventeen. Yes, sir. Thirty-four. At the very bottom, you see all of the fund sources. I knew it would add up. I was just checking. <laughs> you don't want to know how many times we've done this today. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Also, looking at our CDBG, PCID, and tree fund amounts, we have uh, Long Island Drive sidewalk, Northwood Drive sidewalk, Hope Road sidewalk, and Roswood Road streetscape phase two, all from CB CDBG. PCID is Hammond Drive at Georgia 400 Turn Lane, and then we have uh, tree funds, some pilot projects, education programs, surveys, invasives, maintenance, trees, Atlanta, and capital projects. All right, any questions on capital before we start talking through service enhancements? I do have one. Yes, ma'am. Um, so on this this document, our proposed uh, CIP has has anything been just dropped off of it in comparing fiscal year twenty three to twenty four? So PCID crest line at Peachtree Dunwoody has been removed because PCID is not moving forward with that project. Yeah, too. Okay, and I don't believe there's been anything else that has been dropped off of it. PCID is only spent four hundred thousand dollars, and they're sitting on several million dollars worth of cash. That's going to be a conversation we'll be having with them pretty soon. Not sure where we need them. They well, are planning I'm, to I'm come understand in. this. They were good to go. They were they had a bunch of projects. What happened? Mm -hmm. They are coming in to provide an update to council at the June sixth meeting as well. Well, we'll find out then. Okay. General government services. So if you would like to refer to the line item detail, page 16 is the detail on the Sandy Springs Police Department. The information that you see on the slide here is the same information that we reviewed during workshop number one. The requested enhancements include an increase in rent for the 300 and 400 buildings, an increase in jail costs, specialized field testing kits, radio replacements, technology improvements, and then four additional positions, one major, two patrol officers, and one civilian property and evidence clerk. We also have capital request of canine replacement. Uh, Renzo retired this year, so this is a replacement for Renzo. And then also making our ammunition purchases a capital budget item so that it no longer lapses at the end of the fiscal year because of how long it is taking to get ammunition in. 
for the fire department, that's on page 18 of your budget book. We have included requests for supplies for heating and cooling centers whenever they are needed. Replacing our tough books with iPads. And this will allow us to save some funding because we're no longer replacing the tough books, which are about $7,000 a piece. VFIS insurance, which is Volunteer Fireman, Fireman's Insurance Services. It's a supplemental cash benefit plan if any of our firefighters, good Lord forbid, are injured in the line of duty. Additional defibrillators. This is the price to lease 10. Subscription services for weather alerting, which will allow us to get more advanced notice of any impending weather and hopefully not have as uh, close of a delay as we had last year with the fireworks at Sparkle Sandy Springs, or excuse me, Stars and Stripes. And then increase of staffing with three new positions, two firefighter, two paramedics, and a fire inspector. We are also transitioning one part-time logistics personnel position into a full-time. On capital request, they have replacement for their hoses and thermal imaging cameras, three new Lucas devices, new turnout gear and personal protective equipment, renovation of the kitchen at fire station number four, replacement air pack SCBA decon washers to go at stations one, three, and four, which would be similar to the new unit that we just put in service at station two this fall, and then a generator for the mobile center whenever we are activating for heating and cooling or any other type of uh, emergency responses. So the, I just want to ask a, a question about the increase in staffing. Is it indicative of, of some, are there some trends or some increases in activity that I'm, I'm referring to the fire department? Sure, it's, it's more about being able to continue to meet minimum staffing needs because of training and then people who are out on vacation or sick leave, we still have to ensure we have adequate coverage throughout all of our shifts. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Did we have people take advantage of our heating and cooling centers? We did last mm -hmm. year. Uh, we can get a breakdown of the numbers, but we didn't really have anybody there cataloging. It wasn't a huge number, but we did have some folks come in, especially here at the lobby of City Hall. Okay, information technology is next. That is on page nine in your budget book. Funding was requested to have a executive tabletop training for a cyber attack and also increase of staffing, one new GIS analyst and a network administrator for our traffic management center to help harden our network. All of our traffic signals in the city are tied back into the city's network and to our backbone. So we need to have someone who is dedicated to managing that and securing that network. Does TMC fall under IT? No, the operation of the signal itself is public works, but the infrastructure of the network is IT. So that's why this position is within IT. Yes, sir. That the cyber attack executive tabletop training, can they open that up to us also? Because I mean, we're all getting that problem with spam and people coming into our systems all the time. Absolutely. We will work that out and figure out how to make that happen. That would be great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Did we ever get the um, public Wi-Fi at Morgan Falls? I think that's part of running the, the fiber to the park this year. We have quotes coming from Comcast and Verizon to do that. Okay. I'm working with Mike's team so you can see what's going to be a good set. All right. Um, how about the Office 365 rollout? Did that ever happen? We're done with that. We're done with that. Then we also have ongoing infrastructure hardware replacement, some of our servers and our network switches, then workstation replacements and upgrades. On parcel corrections, what we're going to do is hire an independent firm who will come in and provide us with a data set so that our GIS information will be up to date and current. Often what is published by Fulton County is not the most recent information. So this will be us getting more current information to make it available to the public. And, we'll, and you'll get that from a third party? Mm -hmm. Because they'll get it from where? Most likely from the court. It's just there's right. not a connection between the two. 
Yes, ma'am. Well, all the um, functionality and layers that exist in the GIS today continue. I know we have the council districts and oh, yes. emergency neighborhoods. I mean, there's a plethora of information in there with those layers. We are looking to expand our GIS offerings. We have an unbelievably talented GIS team here and want to put more of those resources out there for the public to use. Yes, ma'am. Human resources is on page 10 in your budget book. And the requested enhancements here are project management training for 30 employees. And then also an ADP, which is our payroll processing system, a data feed, a connection that runs between our benefit provider and our payroll system. Now, much of that is done manually through Excel. And while we love Excel, it would certainly be better for that to be done automatically behind the scenes. As I mentioned in our prior work session, we're looking at options to bid out our health insurance. So it's actually my hope that we'll be able to get a new provider who will pay for that so that we don't actually have to pay for that. Next slide, uh, facilities, which is page 11 in your detailed budget book. We're requesting funding for parking deck improvements. We're gonna replace the LPR system. And make uh, ADA door modifications downstairs to the main entrance from P1 into the elevator lobby. Machinery and equipment is a new forklift at Trowbridge, as well as two gas-powered utility carts with EV options. Hardscape repairs are here at City Green, excuse me, at City Springs. There are some depressions and, and sinking areas that are forming, especially a section right up here next to the fountains. We also have some sidewalk sections that need to be uh, changed and corrected. For the William Payne House site improvements, the funding that's included here is to replace the terrace pavers outside so that we can stabilize the area. And we will bring back a broader conversation about the future use of this facility as it ties into our redevelopment of City Springs Phase 2. These funds are simply to keep the building in a good condition. For capital requests, we have funding in for demolition and preparation for City Springs 2. So that'd be the demolition of the fleet facility, the police gym, the clock shop, the other structures that are remaining. The remaining funds that are needed to complete Veterans Park, City Green artificial turf installation, which would be both the main City Green and the portion over here behind the elevator pop up just outside the Byers Theater. Trowbridge Police Department Vehicle Storage, which will be the pole barn to store our police large, large vehicles under. Under our facility condition assessment, uh, staff went through and evaluated what had been recommended under the plan and identified about $354,000 worth of repairs that need to be made this year. Those are included in the budget. Heritage Lawn Stream Buffer Remediation Design. This is the project to come up with the design to address the issues that we are dealing with over in the meadow and around the original Sandy Springs. And then finally, we have the partial funding of $2 million for Heritage Georgia Commission on the Holocaust. Next, communications, which is page 13 of your budget detail. Funding is requested for training, which is Adobe Video and Scrum Master Training, backup web services, and camera equipment. So as we roll out enhanced video functionality, we'll be using that camera equipment and that training to do that. For their capital, we have the continuation of the outdoor art program in partnership with Art Sandy Springs at $50,000. Public Works is page 21 in Wait, your budget. Sir. Yes, sir. We had talked earlier about putting some sign, some signs outside for the Performing Arts Center. Uh, I forgot what we call them. The wayfinding signage? No, the ones where we where we went ahead and advertised to people what oh, we were marquee? what we were going to be. The marquees. The marquees. Are, are they in the here? No, we've already funded those. Dave, would you yeah, give us an update? Uh, they're in permitting right now. We're looking to call them sometime in the month of June. So they're already purchased. Oh, we're in permitting. Yes, sir. I hope this is better than the permitting at the sign on the other building, City Hall, which took us two years to get. Okay, thank you. This will be very quick. <laughs> Good. Well, we got Ginger pushing it. 
<laughs> well, she knows. And perfect. Kristen. <laughs> All right, Public Works, uh, page 21 in your budget detail. There are funds requested for equipment upgrades. This is two new spreaders. Um, the spreader trucks that we currently have were purchased after snow apocalypse in 2014. Furniture in the TMC downstairs and additional portable message boards. And then 811 integration, which is required by state law. I'm sorry, what's the spreader? What is that? Spreader is what you put on the back of a pickup truck. And as you go and you pre-treat the roads for ice and you spread sand oh, spread. or cinders or salt to huh. keep people from slipping and sliding. Um, and that's and that has something to do with communications? No, that's um, what it works. Oh, it's right. Gotcha. Okay. What's the matter with the ones we have? They're they never get used they're, several times a year. They, they do get used a few times a year, but sometimes... Basically, the salt ends up deteriorating the inside of it, even if you clean them. So they're in need of replacement. They're almost 10 years old. Okay. Next, we have our capital requests, which we've talked through many of these already. I'm not going to read these to council again, but this is just a summary of the ongoing and new capital requests. Recreation and Parks, which is page 24 in your budget detail. Funding is requested for cameras at Morgan Falls Athletic Complex. This is 17 cameras that will be going in. Three cameras at Ridgeview Park and five cameras at Windsor Meadows. Supplies for new programs. This will be a new winter festival, the 5K9 race, and outreach for environmental education. On the capital side, funding is included for Crooked Creek Park Trail improvements. Why? Until we figure out what how that's going to work out with them, we want to make sure we have the money available to move forward with it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Let me know before we spend this. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. We're not going to spend anything yeah. until we get that worked out with them. Do we have cameras in our other parks? Many of our parks do that. But Hammond already has them. And yes, Hammond has them. Let me let me add on, I mean, ask a question too since you brought it up. Um, in, in situations where we have partners who share space with us uh, and there are cameras, do they, has there ever been a situation where they needed access to a camera for whatever reason? I mean, how does that work? When so We're actually having those conversations now as we talk to new operators or potential new operators about our facilities. Um, so what we have are our own cameras. And of course, if something happens and you know we need to share camera footage, we would absolutely do that with our operators. But we also, if they are operating our facility, we do allow them to install their own cameras if that's something that they're interested in doing. So both paths are an option. Can you give me an example of that? Like uh, at Hammond Park for gymnastics, you know, should we choose a new operator to go in there? We have cameras there. They may also choose to install their own or say the, the tennis center, same concept. Okay. Well, if they do, we should automatically have access to them. It's our, it's our facility. Yeah, and I think thus far it's it's our cameras, but it's something that's come up and asking if they can install their own. So we'd have to work through all those details, but. Okay. There's also the network security issues. We can't just give someone access to our cameras. We can pull the feed for them, but we can't give them login to our system right. to view it. That's why they install their own so they can see. And we can pull it for them at any point. It's not a real time deal. Though. Right. Yep. Huh. Okay. Then we also have funding included for design work for Morgan Falls dog park improvements. Yes, ma'am. Two questions. One, um, will we be doing any kind of search or design work for a dog park elsewhere in the city, or is this is still going to remain the focus? The intent is to try to come up with a design there, but we are always open to trying to find an additional site or a new site. There's a, there's a posted reward for somebody who can figure that out. Yes. <laughs> okay. Everybody and, wants a dog park, but not in their neighborhood. Yeah, right. Right. And, um, okay, so then the second question I have on page 25 of the packet that was on the yeah, table. Yeah, so we're going down a significant amount of part time employees, I think, between years, right? From 15, 2023 20, to 34, and the net is minus 15. 
what, what is there any concern with that seems like a lot of um people to remove reduce i think we're just doing a cleanup you have michael please speak to your part-time employees you have a, a sufficient number to meet the, the needs I, I don't know that I don't know that I've seen that number. Honestly, oh, I'm, okay. I hate to even say that. Okay, well, I would just what, say- what's the, what's the number? The, what's the number shows on page 25 that um, there were 62 total, so that's of 12 full-time and 50 part-time. Then 2024 shows a uh, total of 47, and that's 13 full-time, so going up one, and then part-time 34, which is going down 16 for a net of uh, reduction of 15. You know, we, we try to work within whatever our budget is. You know, we add additional camps, uh, summer camps. We have part time, our ambassadors are part time. Um, you know, there are times that we bump up, up on having too many people on payroll because we're only allowed to work in so many hours a year um, per week. So they, maybe, I don't know if that's something might, we might need to look at a little bit further, if you don't mind, city manager. Sure. You know, we just don't want to butt upon it where we've used the allocated numbers and we can't hire anybody yeah. else. Well, that's, so a, that that's a pretty big problem. That well, that's what I'm saying. It was just, it's a, it caught my eye. Most of the other ones are plus one, minus one, right. kind of thing. Tony sure. has an answer as well. So this was everyone who was on payroll at that time. But since then, we have cleaned up payroll and deactivated those who are no longer in the process. So okay. not they didn't actually have 50 last year. So they weren't being paid. At one time. They weren't no. being paid. They were still on the payroll. Okay. Thank you. Their names were listed on the payroll, exactly. but they were receiving no compensation. Right. So this exactly. is just simply a cleanup. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. We've been doing a lot of that lately. Good. And the Good. one FTE that you see on full-time employees is actually our urban forest coordinator out of the tree fund. So we're actually not adding another that was added in 23. Okay, but he's reflected in the 13 here now. Okay, because it's not in the 23 number because right. it was added after that. Correct. Right. It's out of the tree fund. I'm trying to. The so we are fund. doing that out of the tree fund. That's mm -hmm. not right. Yes, we are. And but, we did started that last year. Okay. And we're going to look at that policy. That yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Next, we have community development, which is page 26 in your line out of detail. Their requested enhancements were replacement iPads for field staff, building out uh, the permit lobby to en enhance customer service, and then small tools and equipment, which includes tape measures, measuring wheels, flashlights, digital measuring devices for our 18 inspectors. On the capital side, we have citywide design guideline development included. Next, we have the Performing Arts Center. That is page 47 in the detail. Included here is funding for a customer relationship management software so that we can keep better track of our contacts and our folks that are coming in to rent or looking to use our facility. We also have additional signature event costs upgrading the projectors in our meeting spaces and our other equipment for rentals, refinishing the hardwood floors and the studio theater, the ice skating rink operations and marketing costs, an increase of staffing for a facilities manager who will be responsible for managing the facilities of the Performing Arts Center, including the operations of the ice rink. Separate from the facilities Correct. team. But they'll work hand in hand with the facilities team on other enhancements, the capital needs to address them. You this need be, somebody focused on this? Yes, sir. True. That is a need that they have identified within the pack as needing someone. So, Ian, you've said kind of this has been, but we've, we've talked about this conceptually for years, uh, and now we're we're approving, I think, a 300 and something thousand dollar budget, which I think there's some unknowns. You don't know what, you know, whether that's gross net. I, I think you think that that's, Gross, there's going to be revenue though that there offsets that, correct? For the ice rink? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. We're projecting $164,000 in revenue. To recoup off the $300,000 plus. It's actually 250 for the ice rink rental itself, and then marketing cost of $50,000 and staffing of $40,000. So I, I would respectfully request that, um, you know, we'll, 
if this is a, assuming this was uh, approved in the overall budget mm -hmm. that you work session at some point just okay. come give us a heads up on since it's a pretty big program yeah uh and uh you know sometime in advance uh that you that staff give us a little heads up uh maybe during a work session about sure. the plan for the winter we will be happy to do that we have some other exciting things that we'll be coming to talk to you all about too santa claus is coming to town uh-huh and then we do have the replacement of the video board outside of the studio theater. So, so in the question on, yes, on the revenues mm -hmm. proposed, or do we have like a percentage capacity that we're looking at in some or all of the different venues that I guess obviously it was used to come up with this um, revenue we'll bring in? You now number of shows, et cetera, that kind of thing. Some of what is factored into here is the increase in the rental rates that you know, council we discussed two meetings ago. I'm actually going to put Michael on the spot and ask him to speak to the development of the revenue projections because he has the science in his head for how he came up with that. Uh, thank you for your confidence. You're um, welcome. <laughs> uh, it's not so much uh, based on a percentage of occupancy as it is on uh, uh, looking at trends of where we've been and where we are headed, both in terms of rental activity and in terms of ticket sales. So when we look at our own shows, um, we can project percentage of occupancy. We can say we're going to sell 80% of the tickets. That's our that's our goal uh, for the shows we present. When it comes to uh, uh, occupancy in terms of uh, how much the spaces are used by rental events, it's really hard to do it that way because the rental events are so different. Uh, we just fact talked today uh, in, our, in our production meeting that a uh, very lucrative three day rental we had in March this year is coming back next year. It's a hundred thousand dollars in three days, but we could have and rent, we could have a three day rental that was. Fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. So it's so, but the but the spaces are still occupied. So basically, we look at our calendar. We look at how it's used this year. Um, what those revenues look like, knowing that we're going to have different beds with different sort of revenue streams, and do our best guess of where it's going to be next year. It's not. Uh, it, it's a little bit. There's some science in that, but there's a little bit of our art to trying to figure out. Okay. Next, we have a breakdown of personnel. Uh, this is a table we talked through in our prior work session. But as I've mentioned, as we've gone along, the additional positions this year within finance, we're adding a budget analyst in legal. We have shifted from court the assistant solicitor position. Information technology, we are adding a GIS analyst and the TMC network administrator. Municipal court is the negative one for the assistant solicitor moving to legal. Police is four positions. Fire is three and a half, really, because we are taking one position and changing it from a half FTE to a full time. That is a logistics assistance, assistant, excuse me. And then in the Performing Arts Center, the addition of the facilities manager. Eden. Yes, ma'am. Do we have a breakdown of the, I'm just going back to the theater. Uh -huh. um, do we have a breakdown of what we've made money on, like the revenues and the census for each show? Like, for instance, when we have the Sandy Springs, the City Springs Theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can pull that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay. And that's a rental. Huh? So this makes clear as a rental versus, say, Christopher Cross is a. But we yeah. also still have the alcohol sales. Right. right. That's the city prices here. Okay. Next slide we have is our projected undesignated fund balance. This does not tie back to a specific page in your budget detail, but just want to walk through with everyone how we get to the amount that we put on the capital ballot each year. So we begin by starting with the audited general fund fund balance at the end of June 30th, 2022. That number was 55,283,840. We add to that the projected revenues for FY23 of 125,384,208. 
We then subtract from that what we are projecting to spend in fiscal year 23, which is 128, 352, 377. That gives us a subtotal of 52,315,671. We are required by council adopted policy to keep 25% of our general fund expenditures in our rainy day fund. That's our undesignated fund balance, or excuse me, that actually becomes designated fund balance. 29,629,720. That leaves us with an available fund balance of 22,685,951. We have budgeted use of fund balance of 16,716,640, which includes those capital assumptions that we talked through earlier. And that gets us to the capital ballot number of 5,969,311, which leaves us with no undesignated general fund fund balance. Question. Yes, ma'am. Um, of the, the 22, how, how do you decide, you know, what what becomes valid, what becomes, what gets automatically budgeted? A lot of that is based upon feedback that council has provided throughout the year, staff input during the budget process, uh, things that may come up that are either emergencies or they are ongoing costs that we have to finish. It's back to what Michael was saying, it's that is a bit of art and science as well. Okay, yeah. the next slide is just a recap of our ballot items. As you all will recall, the Abernathy Greenway number, the request for that was 2 million, but because we did not have the full amount, we finished that number out to get to the full 5.9 million. So Abernathy Greenway enhancement is at 1,453,311. Okay, so Next slide that we have is our general fund revenues. And on this one, if you put back to page one of your budget line out of detail, I'll walk you through how we get to these numbers. So each year in usually March or April, Tony and I sit down and start looking, it literally starts in February, but we really hone in on it in March. And we pull what we've collected in prior years, and we look at what we are projecting to receive in the current fiscal year, and we come up with a number that we are comfortable with projecting as our revenue for FY24 or for the next fiscal year. So for property taxes, we had budgeted to receive 42.5 million. We are on track to collect 45 million in 23. And because of that, we are proposing setting our property tax number collection at 44 million which is a one and a half million increase. Sales tax for 23. Uh, That's a one and a half million increase over what you budgeted. It's a million dollars less than what we actually took in. No, yes, that's right, because we're being conservative. I'm not going to, to project that we're going to collect 45 million in the next year. They never do that, John. I know. I'm just asking. Yes, sir. Point of trivia, 2006. Our property tax revenues were 28 million. Uh, I remember when they were lower. 28 million was our first year. Which one of these lines does um, revenue generated by like individual departments, like the fees, uh, right, like parks and rec? That's fees. under other. That's other. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I, I'll walk you through what's included in other in just a minute. Okay. So on sales tax, you recall last year, we were starting the local option sales tax negotiations. So we purposefully budgeted a lower number of 26 and a half million. We are actually on target to collect almost 31 million for FY23. However, because of the uncertainty within the economy and looking at spending trends for 24, we are proposing that our collection be set at 29 million still not as equal to what we are receiving in 23, nor what we were projected to receive with the local option sales tax. Our number for 24, because our percentage was increasing, is supposed to go to about 34 million. But we believe 29 is a good conservative number to keep us on track. Business and occupational taxes for 23, we had budgeted 9.75 million. We are projecting that we will collect a little over 11 million in 23. And then for 24, we're budgeting it bad at 10 million. 
Business and occupational includes wholesale beverage, excise mixed drink, motor vehicle rental, and business occupational taxes. Franchise taxes, which are our taxes paid by our utility providers who utilize the city's rights of way. In 23, excuse me, we were budgeting 8.3 million, 8.35 million. We we're actually projecting to collect almost 9.5 million. Therefore, for 24, we are putting that number at 8 million 935. Insurance premium tax is a premium paid on all insurance policies held by Sandy Springs residents and businesses. For 23, we had uh, budgeted 7.7 .7 million. We are ahead and collecting on track for 8.78 million. For 24, we're putting that at 8.5 million. Other revenue in 23, we have budgeted 14.89 million. We are on track for 20 million 136. And in 24, we are budgeting that at 18 million. That motor vehicle is composed of TABT, so that is the motor vehicle tax, intangible taxes, real estate transfer taxes, alcoholic beverage taxes, all license and permits, charges for services. And if you want to flip actually to the next page in the detail, line two, page two, you can see which ones I'm reading down through. I hope that was you, but then right. Yep, there you go. Planning and zoning, development review fees, reinspections, rec and park fees, municipal court fines, interest, and transfer in from hotel motel. I haven't pulled it. What's the interest variance? Entrance is da, 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 da. it is going up a lot. Right? Oh yeah. yeah, it definitely is. Tony, you might find it past the same. It's on page three of your detail. Line number five down on your detail. Interest revenue. Yeah, uh, we're putting that at point for twenty three. So in FY23 approved, we had budgeted 120,000, but we are on track to collect 3.3 million. And so we're budgeting at that at 3 million for 24. Okay. I'm sorry, did y'all explain why the jump happened? I might miss the interest rate increase. Rates. Because that's something that happens. I mean, it's, the it's, rates have been flat in the last five years and they shot point. up starting last April. And so our investment so sitting our investment, in fund one. Instead of earning a quarter of a percent, are earning 4%, 5%, um, $100 million. The fortunate thing is we locked in a lot of low interest rates with the uh, bond refinancing uh, right. a couple of years ago. Right, but we're we're on the right, we're on the right side of that spread. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next slide is a roll up of our general fund expenditures. We talked through a lot of these when we were referring to the various line item details, but this is a summary for each of the departments. For city council, that does include the uh, increase in council salaries as established by the Georgia General Assembly this year. <laughs> And going to our public works contractor analysis. In, in, yes, sir. I'm sorry. So the five million increase. Uh huh. A bunch of that is uh, personnel, huh? It is. Any mm -hmm. idea what percentage of it is? No, sir. But I can get you the answer. It's also the health insurance increase, our general liability increase, cost of of services. Quite frankly, for our contractors that we still have. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. But we'll get percent broken down by. Yeah, I percent. suspect that's between salaries and health insurance. We're talking big it, changes here. It's the largest that we have. Yes, sir. Public works contractor analysis. You'll recall last year we had just simply budgeted a flat 5.7 million because we were bidding these out. This is one area that we were all pleasantly surprised to actually see a decrease in the cost of the service. Once we bid them out, we saw a 6% reduction in the cost. Even the question is that full year 2023, is that the 2023 year revised amount, projected amount, or the original budget amount? 
So that's the original the budget because some of the other this just says four years so I want to make sure that that's yeah. not the revised because yeah. everyone's over there. there. This was the original. Okay, thank you. All right, next is our parks and recreation parks contractor analysis. And in this case, we have actually seen an increase in the cost of delivering services. We also have a placeholder amount of 150,000 for green infrastructure maintenance. And what we mean by that is the maintenance of our paver systems that we currently have. For example, the parking lot at Lost Corner, parking lot at Lost at, um, Crooked Creek, all of those need some specialized maintenance that we have not been funding yet. So we're setting that line aside to do that here. Next, we have a summary of our nonprofit, our service providers. This does tie back to page 14 in your line item detail. For the Abernathy Arts Center, we have included $50,000 as a subsidy for Art Sandy Springs to continue providing art programming in the facility. The Community Assistance Center is included at 180,000. This is the year that we would be doing our household hazardous waste program at 75,000 with Keep Sandy Springs Beautiful, 95,000 for our recycling, 50,000 to Keep Sandy Springs Beautiful for capital improvements at the site. For Leadership Sandy Springs, they are no longer going to be doing the Movies by Moonlight program. We will be producing that in-house, so that is going to be handled as a signature event. For the Recreation Grant Program, that is included at 150,000. Sandy Springs Youth Sports at 150,000. And new this year is Solidarity Sandy Springs at 25,000. They have indicated that they're willing to track their clients by address. So they would have to implement a system to be able to do that. This is to allow them to get that system in place and then we can revisit any additional funding that might be needed for that. You said that the nonprofit summary is on page 14. Yes, ma'am. It is included as the second line under operations, professional services dash nonprofits. Oh, okay. They're, they're not listed by name. Just keep in mind that we can't just give people money. They have to provide a service in return. Mm -hmm. So everybody has to do something in, in essence, earn that money. To provide some service to the community or to the city. And they provide a report. They do annually. Yeah. What time of the year? Like now? Mm -hmm. Tends to be before we do the final reimbursement. Okay. And one question about uh, Abernathy Arts with their uh, proposed increase. Will that increase the, the services they provide or the amount of people? Oh. It will allow them to continue. Oh, okay. They were you. They were losing money. So we are still evaluating if we will be able to allow them to do watercolors because they believe that they would be able to bring in additional revenue. So the full 50000 may not be necessary if we can make that change happen. And for Sandy Springs Youth Sports, that's just scholarships or open? So that's actually, they operate the park itself. So you make capital improvements at the park, but they maintain that. They actually handle the landscaping out there, those kinds of things. So the contracts for that are within a Phoenix Springs Youth Sports, and the cost for everything has gone up, as we all know. And we haven't increased their allocation. Uh, well, so it's for their operation. Yes. So this and then one point five is for their. Yes. Capital. And then we invest separately in capital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next slide is our general fund contingency detail. Uh, as council will recall. We have traditionally utilized the contingency funds within the various departments for unforeseen that come up during the year. The 950,000 that we've included in the FY24 budget is the same amount that we've included, that was included in FY23. Uh, year to date in FY23, we've spent $281,000. Uh, at the end of the year, what we don't spend here goes towards fund balance, but these are dollars are always included so that if there's an emergency or an issue that comes up during the year, we're able to take care of that without to create a budget issue for the city. We don't roll over. You can't because it's an operating fund. If it was capital, we could roll it. Okay. Next, we have our FY24 summary of budgeted expenditures. This is our all funds budget. 
The bottom line number for this year for our all funds budget is $976,494,681. As you all will recall, the Public Facilities Authority Fund remains our largest fund, but that is because we have to continue to show the cost of the, the to build this facility as well as paying off the debt service for it. That number for that fund will not significantly decrease until we satisfy the debt service for this facility. And the detail on the Public Facilities Authority Fund is included in your detail packet on page. I went and looked it up. Forty-six. Thank you, Tony. And we'll get to that in a couple more slides. Now we'll walk through these individual funds. Performing Arts Center Fund budget, which is page forty-seven in your detail. This corresponds to what we talked about earlier with the enhancements, but is also the breakdown of revenues and planned expenditures. As a reminder. For FY23 and FY24, we are not planning a general fund subsidy transfer to the Performing Arts Center. They will continue to receive transfer from the Hostel Motel tax, but they will be utilizing their own fund balance to handle any other costs, just like we do within our general fund, one-time expenses. Next is the Confiscated Assets Fund Budget. That's on page 29 in the packet. This number is a little more difficult to predict each year because it is based off of confiscated funds that have gone through the court system and have been declared to be paid over to the city of Sandy Springs. We are conservatively projecting 150,000 this year. Next is our E911 fund. This uh, provides funding to support CHATCOM, which is page 30 in your budget detail book. That number we are projecting at uh, $4 million. The tree fund budget, page 31 in your budget detail. We are projecting 300,000 in revenues to be received during FY24 and spending 908,000. What page is that on? That's page 31. Mm -hmm. Any question on that? Yes, ma'am. I think we've had discussions at other um, financial meetings about the free fund balance. I mean, what is that? Should that number really be that large? I mean, should it be something smaller? I mean, I, I mean, are we not spending what we should be spending? This is the first year that we have really begun spending because we've hired the additional staff and we've made the investment in putting in new trees and other programs and partnerships. We do have a plan, which we had looked at earlier on the capital slides to utilize more of these funds. I'm comfortable with what we're spending here and see how it's actually going to work within the community. I wouldn't want to take it down much lower than, than that. If you're talking about the fund balance. Yeah, I guess I'm just trying to make sure are we spending it to you know, keep maintain our canopy or are we spending it in the right places? So, so we sort of outlined new programs and that's what we did in February 2021. Right. We presented new program options. That's because historically we've had a really hard time planting enough trees uh, to, to keep up. So we wanted to add more programs to enhance and take care of our existing canopy. And that's what we've done over the years. Um, so we will have another conversation about that over the next two months, where we're going to go through a formal policy for the tree fund and outline those specific uses and, and all of that. So there will be more discussion on this, but we've tried to expand it so that we can better utilize those funds to make sure we're caring for our existing canopy and adding new canopy coverage. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Why Why was FY22 so out of whack on the revenue? Does anybody remember? Because, Melissa, if you look this year, we're at 3x current, I mean, the 300,000 is sort of more in line with an annual mm -hmm. revenue and we're spending 3x this year alone. Okay. Yeah. 
So, so that would align with all of the residential permitting that, that we have quite a boom in. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, if people are adding decks or pools, they're taking out trees most of the yeah. time. So those two things align. Well, okay. they have a big expenditure plan for this year. The, the difference between the um, 808-669 uh, and the 908-669 is uh, for the expenditures. So it says it's 808 in the detail on page 31, but then it's 908 here, I'm guessing. It includes salaries. Okay, so that, that 100,000 yep. includes a salary. Yeah, if you look on page 31, right up above that, where it says personnel, you add the 103 to the to that. So we're well, transferring. No, no, no. Yeah, it doesn't look like, it looks like you're adding a 705 to the 103 and then you get the 808. That is right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So the expenditures are 808 for FY24? Yes, that is a typo. All right, so there'll be a million. We apologize. That should be 808. All right, so just add 100,000 to the ending fund balance. Mm -hmm. The program that was in. We'll make that correction. Okay. Next, we have the community development block grant, page 33 in your line item detail. These are our various capital projects that we have going on uh, throughout the city and our eligible census tracts, largely uh, south of 285 and some a little bit north. Next, we have our hotel motel tax fund which is page 34. And we're projecting uh, 4.6 million to come in. If you look under expenditures, you'll see 1.3 million to come to the general fund, 1.8 million to the Performing Arts Center, and 1.478 million to our, our uh, Hot Sandy Springs, Visit Sandy Springs. I had a quick question on CDBD. Sure. I was, I was wondering why we, this, um, I know last fiscal year we didn't project any revenue. It looks like this year we are projecting a five five ninety for the CDBG as from the federal grant. And, um, that is simply just a projection at this okay. point because we feel safe. Doing yeah, that. and you know what typically happens with that program? Congress has to okay. pass a budget and then let us know what our appropriation is going to be. We're it's, feeling good. June 1st, we might feel yeah, exactly. June 1st, but who knows? Okay. That might not happen. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens here is large, even if they don't pass the budget, it's going to get wrapped into a continuing res. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a reasonable expectation. And they've, they've never, since the 1970s, not made this distribution to the cities. So, okay. Next is excise tax on rental motor vehicles. That's page 35 in your budget detail. Wait, did you do a hotel motel? I did. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's okay. We'll go back three ways between the pack. If you look at page 30. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Okay. The excise tax on rental motor vehicles is a relatively small number. This is a tax that is levied on rental vehicles that have been rented in the city limits. Next, we have T-SPLOS 1, and in your budget detail, that begins on page 36, and you'll also see a breakdown, and I realize this one's really hard to read, so please look at page 36 in your book. It gives you the line item detail for all of the projects, what we have spent, what our current approved budget is, any adjustments to the projects. This t plus we are in the midst of spending it out and getting all of these projects completed because collections have ceased under this one. So t plus 2 is the next one, and that begins on page 38 in the budget book. You're assuming t plus 1 will be spent out and so, the project's completed by 2024. No. 
what that will do is allow us to carry it forward into the subsequent years already budgeted. What we are trying to do here is to budget what has already been appropriated or what we believe the project costs are going to be so that we're not having to come back and make so many budget amendments during the year. And it's not really accurate on T's boss to show it as undesignated when all of the projects are very clearly designated. Why are the revenues in T's boss one and 24? No, they don't get that separate. Well, they have the are, we still, are we still collecting money from T's boss one? No, it, it, it ended in April. April. The new the new collection started. What is the budget showing us too? PCID. That is PCID that has been pledged towards projects like Hammond, uh, not Hammond, excuse me, Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon so, so, all right, so we're expecting to be able that into this. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. And I, are we holding, we're holding that money, right? The we don't have the PCID money. No, but the T-SPLOS money. Right? Yes. So and we're investing it. Yeah, so I presume there's some interest. There you know, is. More, you know, actually meaningful interest revenue now that... Mm -hmm. Uh, the the interest rates are going up. Right, so there'll be some of that revenue, but you haven't shown it or it sort of ends up in is a that, contingency, right? Mm -hmm. Is that revenue going to the t plus or is that going to the general budget? So t plus revenue, if it's interest off the t plus it would go into t plus And you it see does. there is a lot like, that we do have 247000 shown on page 36 as our interest right. income okay. for t plus yeah, yeah, That's pretty decent interest income, I think. Well, we're holding $50 million still. Right. Right, the ending fund balance is $50 million. That, that number should be over $2 million a year. That, that, yeah, that should be a $200,000 a month. We'll take a closer look at that one. Yeah. Is that in uh, Georgia? It, that's, that's in Georgia One Fund, right? It is. Yes, sir. Yeah, they may not have caught up. It's like certain. They catch up slower. Yeah. On the way up. On the way down, they go down faster. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying to Tony, we're going to need to look at it. All right, so then let's talk about T's plus one. Mm -hmm. How much of the 100 million is still not spent? I did fund balance. Which is which number here? Um, I, is that, I mean, I'm, I'm answering the question. That can't be 93 million. No, it looks like it's 42 at the end of fiscal 23. Mm -hmm. Would you get to 42? It's an ending fund balance, right? Oh, I presume yeah. that's unspent. On page 37. It's not uncommitted, it's just unspent. Is that right? Yeah, just go over these numbers if y'all would. We're going to have an update, right, on T-SPLOS projects. We are. I think. Okay, let's do We've that. Got, or which would include the yeah. financials. We've yeah. got Chris coming to do that in a couple of weeks. Chris is doing it? He'll be coming to give us an update on the planning efforts. Okay. Since he is our appointee to the Fulton County Committee, we need our staff to be able to tell us exactly what what the plans are and the timelines for these. For these we will, projects. yes, sir. And we need we need to get these things done. Yeah. So if you look at page thirty seven, we have spent or encumbered forty eight million. That's the, the bottom line. T plus capital projects. There's still fifty two million remaining to be spent. And that we have in cash. Yes. At 4%. Well, at 4%. We really may not be getting 4% from Georgia 1. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. And who, we can't go into treasury bills. Nope. They might not pay. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't do that now. <laughs> no, don't worry. Don't, worry. don't pay. Don't roll the whole work. No, we are limited. I mean, yes, it is hurting us, the state law that requires that we to park these funds in Georgia. Yes, but I thought when I had asked the question about laddering, we were satisfied with what Georgia one was doing. So which is it? It was around 4% when I looked at it back in January. I haven't looked at it in the last month or so. Oh, so, oh, what? Oh, before we're done. Yeah, so if we can, I mean, this, this yeah, goes back to the conversation. Bucks. It's been a year, again, it's been years since we've had these money management conversations, but um, I mean, listen, it's it's not outweighing the rate of inflation. So, no. um, but nonetheless, it, you know, to make our numbers, these numbers matter. Uh, mm -hmm. So if we can get an update on on that, you know, I, I, to, to the mayor's point, um, seeing a projected ending fund balance of 42 million 
So it means there's a lot of money that's allocated that still has to be spent. spent. Right. So that's a lot of work. You know, that those 11 teach plus mm -hmm. FTEs have a lot of work to do. They do. And then when you go to the next one, which is TS plus two, which is page uh, 38 in the detail, and then page 39, this is TS plus 2021. We've spent or encumbered 9.3 million and we have 110 million. All right, so we don't have 110 million cash. No, those collections are still coming in. Yeah, I was gonna say they're just starting. Right, they? that's exactly right. That's what it's, the projections are. Well, just to round out, if you can come back to us, a, a follow up on the interest revenue Got it. on all our funds. Yeah, that 247 does seem to be small. Well, that's last year. Maybe that's all yeah, it was. Probably was, but rates have gone up. Oh, yeah. Substantially this year, we're up at least 300 basis points. And if Georgia One has actually kept up, then we should be doing much better. All right. We will bring that back for our next workshop. So the next slide is our capital projects fund budget. In your budget detail, your one-year plan is included on pages 40 and 41. Beginning on page 42 and going through page 44 is the five-year CIP, which is the same as this larger printout Good. that we gave you Well, we can read the larger printout. That's why we brought the larger printout. I thought I could read it better too myself. So. <laughs> Otherwise, we need the requisitions and magnifying glasses. <laughs> well, thank you. Here's our detail on our FY24 capital projects fund. You'll see we start out with our capital contingency line, then we move down through our miscellaneous projects. What page are you on? I'm on page 40 in the budget detail. Okay, 40. But you can also on your slides, it's page. 42 in the We have departmental projects, which include the citywide design guidelines, generator for mobile centers, firefighter turnout gear, fire equipment replacement, eight new Lucas devices, kitchen renovation at fire station four, air pack SCBA washers, network hardware replacement, workstation replacement, parcel correction, canine replacement, and police ammunition. Going down to city center projects. I assume we've got flock cameras on here. That is carry forward money. We're not including FY24 money. That was included from a prior year. Okay, we haven't budgeted anything for flock cameras for this year? Not for any additional ones, no, sir. We can certainly add that if you guys would would like to see us bring more of those online. Well, haven't they done? Haven't they? The police department used a lot of those flock cameras for solving a lot of problems. Yes, sir. Do we need more? Uh, they would help. It always help. Let us talk about it because it wasn't a, a request that PD yeah. brought forward. But let us see where they are and see if we need to bring. Because the way things are going. And Anything we can do to help the police solve crimes is. I could get the uh, Fulton County District Attorney to prosecute people we catch. That was really Maybe we can put him on a flock camera. Or, 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 or. Well, there's also more to pay with those flock cameras in case there's a hitting exit. Right. The incident occurs. So it's got to be helping. That does. Well, we're, we're using uh, doorbell cameras and all other kinds of. Have we considered some sort of a program of sharing the cost of flock cameras with? Uh, neighborhoods and stuff like that, so to encourage them. What, what's the question, Mr. Council? Have we considered? have we considered some sort of a program of sharing the cost? I think flock cameras cost like fifteen hundred dollars a year, right. if I remember correctly, it's something like that. Yeah, okay. no, we, we haven't looked into that. Uh, might be something we should look at and see if it might be a benefit. Sort of like our traffic calming program. Yeah. We're uh, on a cost sharing basis. Maybe. Yeah. A lot of these neighborhoods, they can afford them anyway. It's in fighting between the neighbors. It doesn't so. matter if they can afford them, they don't want to pay for them. They don't well, the problem is, is they don't want to be they don't want they don't want to be surveilled themselves. They 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 have concerns over privacy issues 
uh, that tend to evaporate when they've had a crime in the neighborhood. That's right. But, uh, yeah. yeah, but right, but my, my you recall that there have been a couple that we've had communities that did want to pay for their own, and we ran into problems because of disputes among the neighbors about uh, who was who was who, you know who was being watched, you know. So, so there was some privacy the issues. Folks were being watched. Well, there were some some folks who had privacy concerns. We'll look into that and we'll come back at our next. Uh, but thank you. Time. Yes, sir. Down under city center projects, you see the $200,000 for demolition here in uh, city center. And then going to our next slide on facility projects, we have $150,000 for Trowbridge. This is the uh, storage facility that would be on the lower level. $2.3 million to complete Veterans Park. Uh, facilities maintenance at $354,000. That is facilities maintenance. That's the recommendations that came out of the facilities maintenance condition assessment where staff went through and evaluated what needed to be done this okay. year. And that's a capital expense. Mm -hmm. uh, One of the things in, in a couple of previous budget session, council decided that we need to start taking, instead of deferring maintenance, which adds, adds cost, is to start assessing what our maintenance needs are and trying to fix problems in real time. Mm -hmm rather than deferring the maintenance, uh, which means it's always more costly. So that's the, the result of this survey and study that we did. Which one of these projects will be, uh, you mentioned that the making the entrance uh, wheelchair accessible. Um, which which one of these is, is that, or is that folded into something else? That is an operational because of the cost. That was a enhancement in the facilities department this year. Oh. So it was not a capital expense. Okay. Next down, we have the 530000 for installation of the artificial turf on both sections here. Then we have 250000 for the design work for heritage lawn stream buffer remediation and 250000 for the video board outside of Studio Theater. The next slide is our park projects. We have included the 1.453 million from the capital ballot this year, 80,000 for Morgan Falls dog park improvement design, and then Abernathy, oh, excuse, wrong one, Morgan Falls athletic improvements at 1.5 million. Uh, so Old Riverside has 4 million of previous outside funding. That's what we're calling the impact fees. Previous yes. Outside funding. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Next, we'll move into transportation projects. We have 250,000 for the Roswell Road Phase One. Moving down, we have the construction of the High Point Road pedestrian crossing, Roswell Road at Lake Placid for the mask arms, and then Signal 350, Peachtree Dunphy Road multimodal study at 250. Remember that is a uh, 200,000 from the ARC and 50,000 at match from the city. Rehab for our internally illuminated street signs. Long Island Drive at Mount Vernon Highway intersection improvement at 800. Morgan Falls pedestrian light lighting at 816. And Lake Forest Drive at Allen Road for 1.2 million. We have a neighborhood sidewalk program, right? Yes, we do. Is that, would that be listed here or is that I'm doing? Or is that maybe it's there? A lot of that has moved to Tease Blast. Our neighborhood sidewalk program here? We do no, have. Nobody's done that in years. Nobody's this, done that in years. So do we scrap it? Everywhere? That's where we match phones? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's. We did one on Robert Drive by like Dave Scanning years yeah. ago. But you don't really know about it. But, but did we do one? I, yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, it was a gap. It was a gap. Yeah. And they, and they yeah. offered to commit some money to it. Yeah. It was a gap field. We've, we've had this money out there for yeah. six, seven, eight years, and uh, nobody's. That's the only one I think of. Yeah, I think it was, and it was, it was, it was not a real complete sidewalk. I mean, we could, if somebody there. comes to us for a project, we can always allocate money to it. Yeah, right? So we, so we no longer formally have that. Policy wise, it's still there. It's still on the books. If somebody brings it to us, then we can fund it. Yeah, nobody's wanted to pay it. Nobody's wanted to pay their share. No. Well, well that's part of the whole thing. Once you once you install a sidewalk, 
it's done. Yeah. So the, the more sidewalks we install, the less need for sidewalks there is because there's more sidewalks been installed. So you know, a nice benefit of having them done. Continuing on, we have under capital programs, we have our pavement management program at 7.4 million. That's 900,000 from LMIG, 6.5 million from the general fund. City beautification at 125,000. Intersection and operational improvements at 725. Guardrail replace, replacement at 50,000. Bridge and dam maintenance at 300,000. Traffic management program at 600,000. TMC fiber at 350 and traffic calming at 50,000. Where are we getting the 900,000 for for the pavement management program? LMIG, the local maintenance improvement grant. From is it, it 900,000? Okay. It's, that's what we're projecting it to be this year. That's good. Next is our stormwater fund budget, which is on page 50 in your line item detail. So it comes after your five year CIP. I went too far. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. This year on stormwater, we are projecting 2.16 million, and we are looking to spend 2.17 million. That may not be spent entirely in FY24. It would simply be budgeted and would carry forward because it is a capital project. This next slide is one that I'm always so proud to point out for council each year. What this slide represents is the amount of investment that the city has made in infrastructure in the city since incorporation. Since incorporation, we have invested $348 million in capital projects and in stormwater improvements throughout the city limits. But that doesn't include this building. No, it does not. Now you're up to almost a billion. That's exactly right. And it doesn't include two spots. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Uh, we're, we're not almost up to a billion. No, for the building itself, I'm sorry, that is uh, 200, 200 million. million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 230. There was, a lot, of, there was a lot of roads. This yeah. building didn't cost that. But no, the building cost 200 no, million. No, it didn't. No, 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 it didn't. But the building, the parking lot costs a lot, and, and we did a whole bunch of road stuff. But yeah, we're, we're not anywhere near a billion. A lot of money. Next is our impact fee fund, which is page 32 in your line item detail. You'll see here that we are projecting to receive 1.4 million in impact fees, and we are budgeting to spend 1.43 million, which would roll over if not expended during this current fiscal year. It's a, we just allocated a you chunk. Sure did. So where does that come from, last year's? Or? Mm -hmm. That's in 23. This year's? Yes, sir. So the 5 million does include the 4 million or old Riverside? It does. And why is that shown in expenditures? Because we haven't spent it. It would simply be ex uh, encumbered. Yeah. Okay. We'll send out the detailed impact fee uh, report. Are we proposing to, to spend that money in 2024? Old You're Riverside? hopeful to. We'll be bringing back a discussion on Old Riverside. So the, that is our biggest project to spend more of the impact fee funds. Didn't our last budget amendment include that? We, we actually have voted to encumber a certain amount of money. So we just haven't. Go ahead, Kristen. I'm just going to say on the process. So because Old Riverside is in the river corridor, it's there are going to be a lot of permitting. Sort of the time frame for that is going to take a while. So we have design and permitting. We estimate that's going to take several months of next fiscal year. And then uh, in FY25, we'll finish allocating the capital dollars that are needed or before, before that if we're ready. you got to get approved from the Corps of Engineers, the yes. Atlanta Regional Commission. It's going to take a while. And, and they're, they want very detailed plans and uh, so it's it, it, it's it's going to be a cumbersome project just because it touches the river. The next slide, slide 50, shows that our recommended project for 24 is the Crooked Creek Trail improvements, but Councilman, to your point, 
or not move forward with spending any of that until we have I mean, come to an agreement with the National Parks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Next is the public authorities, public facilities authority fund, which is page 46 in your line item detail. The 13, <laughs> sorry, y'all. Well, the, the, the 13 million um, ARPA, <laughs> they are shown as, are they revenue for fiscal year 20? Where are they reflected on the slide? Mm -hmm. They're the revenues of FY23. They'll be FY23. So they're in that 20, they're wrapped in that 28. Yes. And Councilman Bauman and Councilman DeGiulio, you'll see under expenditures on page 46, the breakdown for the City Springs project, which was the 226 million. Page 26. Page 46 in the, in the line out of detail, Councilman. Right. The other document. Yeah. But it has total expenditures of 578. Well, that includes the debt service mm -hmm. and interest carrying. That's exactly right. And it also includes the police headquarters, municipal court, conflict, fire station. Two. That's all the capital projects we've done. Mm -hmm. Again, close to a billion dollars. Okay. Page 15. Okay. So next uh, slide is our development authority, which is page 51 and our budget detail. And this is our last slide today. And we are proposing revenues of 450,000 and expenditures of 453. Hey, Rusty, how can we, are we getting all that we can get out of our development authority? um opportunities and what what can we do as policy makers I, th I think we are i mean originally the development authorities even envisioned it when she started it was just supposed to do city projects like this yes. uh there are i mean john is on there and uh, on the, is one of the board members and i mean i think if we go forward particularly with the projects across the street They'll be very heavily involved, and a couple other projects around town that uh, there are conversations going on. I, I'm sure we can't really talk about them yet, but that could could get them more involved in in that process. Uh, there haven't been a lot of opportunities, largely because we didn't want to get into that that business too much. But given the challenges with the Fulton Development Authority in the last couple of years, it's probably better for us to be doing more of that sort of stuff when it needs to be done than, uh, than relying on others at this point. So the answer to your question is, yes, there's more opportunity. Uh, and we're going to see, particularly as we get into the negotiations for a preferred City partner. Springs 2. Yeah, City Springs 2. That will be, the development authority will be as heavily involved in that as they were in this. And then probably at least one or two other projects around town that uh, there's some opportunity, particularly given the cost of capital today and projects that I think this body would like to see move forward may need some help. And so they're the appropriate organization to do that. Who's the chair of that now? Jim Collins. Jim Collins. Do, we, do we keep a list of projects just historically that the development authority has had? Mm -hmm. yeah. But they haven't been a lot. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's on our website. website? Yeah. yeah, there's a development for every page that has a bunch of stuff on it. We have not done a lot. This is not no, this has not been one of those agencies that we've relied on because you know we, we utilized others, but I think the time will be coming very shortly where they may play a more important role. The development authority is used a lot of times for development bonds mm -hmm. and interest rates have been at zero for right. the past 15 years so nobody's needed it well of course the thing is they can't issue tax exempt bonds but they haven't needed to because interest right. rates have been right. so low right so when, it, when rates get higher then that's when they that's when it comes up with the development bonds. they really don't have a real advantage on issuing bonds other than they capacity right? yeah it's capacity and it does it, it goes on the development authorities 
uh, yeah. balance sheet, not the developer's balance sheet. So and not the cities. Uh, not, it not doesn't go on the cities either. It goes on, on the development authority, which is a, as an authority is an independent body operating within the city. So, uh, you know, John, do you guys meet at all? Or we are scheduled to meet every quarter, but unless there's something happening, the meetings don't happen. We've had, we had one this year. Uh, I don't know if we have one. I, I, guess, I guess what I'm asking is do they take their cues from the city or, you know, are they, do they have any, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know what, what you're doing, but what the expertise is of this group. And, you know, we don't, some development bodies have, you know, significant expertise attached to it. I don't know that this one. No, no. Does. It, uh, we would rely on the city staff to do whatever analysis needs to be done, as well as our fiduciaries to help us figure yeah. out if there were fin financing involved. Uh, as I say, I think it moved to the City Springs 2.0. They'll be involved in that. Uh, and I know of at least one other possible project where they might be helpful. Even I had a question on, yes, on property tax revenues. Do you have a breakdown of Homestead properties versus all others? Like how much of that $44 million comes from uh, property that qualifies for Homestead exemptions, basically? For the most part, single family residential, homeowner owner occupied yes. versus everything else. Can we, we can, get that number? We can get that. that would be great. Thank you. Okay. The 1.3 million that they received, the development authority received this year, um, where did that come from? And it was listed as a contract payment. I was just, those are the tax abatement payment that we received. Some were from the prior fiscal year uh -huh. that were late. Okay. We got an FY20. That's uh, two. So it's typically like around the two hundred thousand we see in the previous. It's reducing mm -hmm. based on the number of years they've been uh, receiving the tax abatement. Mm -hmm. So we're budgeting next year for four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if you want to pay, you see the same thing: four fifty in, four fifty out from here. One last question. I just want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. So fiscal year twenty five. Not to get ahead of myself. We we have eight million allotted or uh, proposed for the um, commission on Holocaust. That is simply a planning number. Okay. But what you see for out years is simply for council's awareness. None of those I feel confident telling you they will change. We're gonna have a bigger conversation about that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Shortly. Sure. Any other questions today? I have a question about the development authority. Is that how often are people who's like how long is the appointment for four year terms? Four year? Yeah. Are they all coterminous? Are they or are they staggered? I people? think so, Rocky. I think they're staggered. Are they scattered? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, but are those mayor years. appointments? Pardon? Are those mayor appointments? Approved by council. We got a list of who's on it and when their terms are off. Yep, mm -hmm. I can send it out. So, a question on cistern improvements. I see this is now slid to 2025. Yes. How is that? Mm -hmm. That we're going to do that this year. Am I, am I incorrect? Oh. So the the uh, bypass is pretty here. I think it's time to get in. Okay, so that's that's a placeholder number. Depending on what you find, we're talking about. The contractor is just supposed to do bypass, right? Yes. While they're doing the park and then do the assessment, see what repairs are necessary. The bypass. Yes. That's being done simultaneously with the work. With Veterans Park. Veterans Park. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. One more small thing. Uh, I believe I believe the same thing came up last year, but I'm going to say it anyway. It would be helpful to have those um, correlating page numbers. On the slides. I know. I just want to say that again. <laughs> All right. Anything else? All right. Thank folks. Thank a lot of work you. here. Jeez. Well, yeah, thanks for all the staff. Thank this you. is Michael. I, I understand you're up at three o'clock this morning. That's what supposed to get. 